Well, hello everyone and welcome to Axiom's webinar today. I am Robin Merritt, I am your host. I'm an Executive Vice President here at Axiom. I again want to welcome you. If you have joined us before, welcome back. If you are new to our webinar, we are extremely excited to have you as a first time guest and hope you'll be joining us for many more. So let's get to it. What are we doing today? Here, let's stop sharing because this is all about us today. You're gonna get a lot of information regarding the evolving landscape and workforce management. You might ask yourself, well, where did you get all that information? How did you gather it? We've put a lot of time and effort, or which is the same as time, and um, capital into a group here at Axiom. It's called Vendor Information Panel, VIP internally for us. We actually have the leader of that group speaking today on, on this call. Now, this group has spent a lot of time doing a couple of things. One, listening to you as a customer, truly paying attention to your roadmap for workforce management, your business requirements, the industry needs, where we're going. And my gosh, we're going fast now based on what happened to us over this last year, right? So we gather all of this information from you as a customer. Then we sit with our vendors and we're able to have some really good dialogue one-on-one -on -one so that we can tell our vendors, hey, this is what we're hearing from our customers. These are the new business requirements. This is why it's tough to do business in the world of compliance, in the world of uh, workforce management. We gather all of that information, big spreadsheets, lots of information, lots of data, and our VIP group then starts to dissect it. So today, you're gonna to get the benefit of hearing from, again, our, our leader of that group and from our president of our company and CEO, what, what all that data is that we've gathered. Now, we obviously don't have a couple of hours with you. We'd love that, but we don't. So in about 45 minutes, we're gonna go through nine vendors. We're gonna talk about our workforce management leaders and we're gonna talk about the workforce management challengers. So who's new in the industry? Now, under each one of those, we're also gonna talk about what's new. So what should you be thinking about in, in terms of functionality, but also what's, up, what's coming up, what's on the horizon, give you a little glimmer into things that you should be thinking about. And again, as you know, from this last year, all that sooner rather than later. We're not talking 2022 or 2023 that we're now looking at new technology. It's right now in front of us. Okay, that all being said, it's about time that you meet our panelists because I'm just the host and I could talk forever, right? But I'm not going to. First, I'm gonna introduce you to Bob Clements. If you've been with us before, you know who this gentleman is. If you've been in the workforce management world, you know who he is. Bob Clements is our CEO, our president. And guess what? He has over 30 something years of experience in workforce management. He's built his own solution. He's worked with our vendors. He's worked with our customers. He's implemented, he's developed roadmap strategies. He sits on boards that with workforce management um, focus. So Bob, welcome to the webinar today. Thanks Robin, I'm excited to be here. You better be, right? <laughs> so, and wanna come on and join us? Hello, Andrew. Andrew's joining us from the UK. And again, I think I spoke a little bit about him, which is he is the leader of our VIP group. And this is really important because not only is he part of this group and the leader of it, he spends a lot of time with customers, building strategic roadmaps, talking about their workforce management journey. And in that has spent a lot of time across many, many project, uh, products. He's been with us almost 12 years, and Andrew comes to us from the UK. Welcome, Andrew. Thanks, Robin. Welcome, everybody. Hello. So let's get started. I'm going to kick this off to Bob, but the first thing I want you guys to see um, are what, what are the vendors we are, or who are the vendors we are, are speaking about today. So I'll just put this slide up, and then we'll get out of this quickly, and you can see our panelists. So you can see we've broken this down into two separate space or two separate categories with our leaders and our and our um, our challengers. And Bob, today you're really going to talk about the landscape. You're going to talk about what's impacted, what's changed, and then I'm going to turn it over to the both of you, and you two will be um, walking us through the 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 new and the upcoming for each one. Correct? Is that where we are, Bob? Yep. <clears throat> yep. So why don't 
why don't I go ahead and get started and we can talk a little bit about the scope of today's conversation. So what we're going to focus on, I guess if you've heard me talk about workforce management and the, the vendor landscape in the past, one of the things I often talk about is the evolution of workforce management, right? If we back up way back in the day, workforce management started out really as, as time and attendance and scheduling solutions that weren't integrated. But over the last couple of decades, these have evolved to be kind of a fully integrated, rich workforce management solution that often includes budgeting and forecasting and scheduling and absence and leave and all this other stuff. It's expanded to include messaging in some cases. It's expanded to include task management. There's an element of mobility with solutions today. And many of the WFM vendors have also either evolved or bought uh, HCM solutions. So the workforce management landscape today can be really, really, really big. But what we're gonna focus on right now is we're gonna focus on the traditional functions of workforce management. So we're gonna be looking at those vendors and, and their, their time and attendance, their forecasting and scheduling, their absence and leave solutions. We're not gonna worry about HCM. We're not gonna worry about communication or task. And we're really not gonna focus on mobility, although all the vendors have some sort of mobile capability that we're gonna be talking about today. So that's the focus that we've got. Now, why are we gonna talk about this today? Well, after a long period of relative stability in the workforce management market, we've seen the workforce management market start to change. And that change has been really driven by a couple of things. First of all, we've started to see some new players emerge on the enterprise market. Now there's been new players coming and going for a long time, but a lot of those are small to mid-sized business vendors. And what we're focused on are the enterprise vendors, those that serve large you know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of employee organizations. And so there's not, we often don't see people kind of challenging the, the market leaders. And I, we're starting to see some challengers emerge over the last couple of years. Uh, so that's, that's creating change. In the last 12 months too, we've also seen some important events that have happened in the market. You know, one of the biggest is the merger between Ultimate Software and Kronos. Both large HCM and workforce management vendors in their own right, <clears throat> Coming together, they create a nearly $3 billion per year workforce management and HCM powerhouse. So that certainly has shaken things up. But we've also seen other events in the market. So for example, Zebra, uh, the, the traditional handheld hardware company has acquired Reflexus. And we've also seen comings and goings in terms of executives and important influencers in the workforce management industry. So for example, Longtime industry veteran Martin Hartshorn recently took over as the CEO of When I Work, who we're going to be talking about in the challenger, cap uh, challenger section. Uh, and, and really, Martin's mandate is to expand When I Work from being somebody that's in that small and mid sized business space to being an enterprise provider um, as well. I guess they're, they're going to do both, right? That's what a lot of vendors are doing these days. The, uh, the other, another example of a coming and going is another industry veteran, uh, Owen Brangwin, has returned to Infor, where he was before, to lead Infor's product strategy around their workforce management solution. So, so getting these new voices is going to have a big impact on what those organizations are doing with their workforce management roadmap and with their technology. The third thing that's happened this year, and, and you might be surprised I haven't mentioned it to this point, is, of course, COVID. COVID has created a tremendous amount of turbulence from a labor perspective um, and also from a workforce management systems perspective. Many of, the, many of the vendors had to adapt very quickly to the changes that happened to COVID, whether that's around you know, uh, providing uh, questionnaires to attest to whether or not you're feeling any uh, symptoms of COVID or whether you've been exposed or tracking and tracing reports or how they've responded to the, the, the change in forecasting uh, that, that's resulted from all this. So all of these changes is kind of started to upend the workforce management space a little bit. And, and it's caused a lot of companies to look at what their workforce management strategy is going forward. And we'll talk a little bit about that strategy as we wrap up today. But for now, what I'd like to do is bring Andrew in and talk a little bit about 
you know, those nine vendors that we just showed and the division between the market leaders and the market challengers. I guess, Andrew, can you talk for a minute about why we've, we've, we're focused on these vendors and, and kind of how we've done the segmentation? Sure. Uh, thanks, Bob. So in preparation for the webinar today, we decided we want to break down the vendors into, into two categories in order to make the, the content today a little bit more digestible. So the category that you can see on the, on the left is, is what we're categorizing as market leaders. Now, when we say market leaders, this is really the, the, the uh, workforce management vendors that have the, the majority of the market share, the largest piece of the market share. They're also the vendors that have typically been around for the longest. So they're who we kind of think of when we say that the market leaders. However, on the right hand side, we've got the market challengers. So, so these are the, um, the vendors that we, we see have very broad expertise. Um, they also have very capable and ever more capable enterprise solutions. And so what, we, um, what we're finding is that these are the, the types of vendors that we're seeing more and more of um, during vendor selections, during implementations. And so what we want to do is cover off both kind of areas um, in order to, to provide a more um, holistic view of what the, the vendor landscape looks like today and what the innovations look like. That's great. And I know, Bob, we've um, we've categorized these in alphabetical order, just so everybody knows, uh, under each one of these categories. So, um, you know, as much as I like to talk, I think that's it for me. I'll turn it over to you guys. And I, Andrew, I think you're going to kick us off alphabetically with Blue Yonder. Indeed. Thank you. Um, so to start with with Blue Yonder. Um, so Blue Yonder previously uh, Red Prairie. Um, and then JDA, and then more recently rebranded to, to Blue Yonder. And they have a couple of um, partnerships, uh, partnership announcements that have been made. Um, so the first is around um, uh, collaboration with Microsoft, um, around Microsoft Teams and integration with the Microsoft Teams platform. Now, Microsoft Teams has seen a 300 plus percent increase for obvious reasons over the last 12 months. And so it's quite opportunistic and, and quite a good idea to, to, to try and utilize that platform that people are familiar with. So what we're seeing here is, is the way in which you can use that platform to um, request information on schedules and to, to carry out functions without actually needing to go into the workforce management platform itself. Uh, another partnership that we're seeing is um, Trax Retail, which is a type of agency for lower skilled work. Um, and the idea of this partnership is really to provide hassle free kind of integration for clients that are looking to, to tap into an additional resource pool for their um, for their workforce. And so this would allow them to be able to spin up more resources if needed for, for a short period of time. And this is really predominantly targeted at, at kind of retail and fulfillment centers initially. And it's all about kind of focusing on that gig economy. Um, so up and coming then for, for Blue Yonder, um, other items include decision support, artificial intelligence. So this is kind of a bit of a theme that we're seeing, but this is about providing more operational um, guidance and making tasks easier, really. Um, now, Blue Yonder are looking to um, harness the Azure platform to help them with that AI. Um, and this is going to ultimately reduce time that, that managers need to spend in the system. And then there's UI improvements. So there's kind of resizing of, of screens and new dashboards and, and design across the, um, across the platform. And then functional improvements and in areas like long-term planning um, and cross-location planning as well. Um, so Bob, perhaps if you could take us through, uh, through Ceridian, please. Of course, yeah. So for, you know, just to, to bring everybody up to speed or catch everybody up if you're not aware, you know, Ceridian is a longtime payroll service provider. Uh, while they dabbled in workforce management, <clears throat> excuse me, while they dabbled in workforce management, they really went strong into workforce management a few years ago when they bought a company, a workforce management startup called Dayforce. Now, Dayforce was developed by a bunch of industry veterans. And the product was one of the first SaaS workforce management solutions to the market and uh, was incredibly free, feature rich for the time. Uh, since then, 
uh, Dayforce has become kind of the cornerstone of Serene's technology platform. It's expanded to include an HCM solution as well as the WFM solution, and they continue to make a lot of progress on both fronts. Uh, in terms of what what's new with Ceridian and where they're headed, I can kind of bucket it into two things. So one of the things I think is one of the coolest new features that they've come out with is they've come out with something called the Dayforce Wallet, which is basically Dayforce's answer to same day pay. Uh, Dayforce is doing some, or Ceridian is doing some very unique things in terms of how they're offering it to their customers. It's a very low cost thing and it gives uh, employers a lot of control in terms of how they provide daily pay to their customers. So uh, really neat feature around what they're doing with Dayforce Wallet. The other big bucket that I would put uh, kind of Dayforce functionality into is uh, compliance. They've been, uh, Ceridian has been very, very focused on, on compliance. So improving things like uh, employee approval on schedule edits. So when a schedule gets changed, employees approve them of that change. And, and as we see the roadmap and start looking out, Dayforce is continuing to introduce more and more compliance related uh, capabilities and, and monitoring features for things like the Fair Work Week legislation. So a lot of progress on that front for Ceridian. Uh, Andrew, I'll turn it back over to you to talk about Infor. Okay. So for Infor, they have an announcement around the multi-tenant platform that they're launching. So at the moment, um, Infor is currently a, a single tenant platform. And what we mean by multi-tenant um, is that that is a single code base that is accessed by multiple clients. So kind of a, a true cloud solution, if you like. Um, now this will be the same code base as the, the single tenant platform, but it will allow Infor to benefit from the economies of scale that, that you kind of naturally get from multi-tenant platforms. But it also more importantly means for clients that there's a, a kind of an easier path for, for, for updates. It means that they'll be smaller, they'll be digestible, and they will be on the latest version at all times. Um, another area for, for info, um, which is kind of close to our hearts, is, uh, is the Opus integration. So Opus has been integrated to work seamlessly with info for integrated labor model alignment. Now, this is our kind of labor modeling tool. And what it means is by integrating the, the, the two platforms, the, it removes the need for info configuration overhead. And um, so you no longer need to configure the, the elements of your labor model. That's something that can, can load across via that integration. Um, other areas that are of interest are kind of closer harmonization of the LFSO module and the, the MVS, which is the multi-view scheduler. Um, so what Infor are looking to do is to bring those two closer together. And this will really help for clients that have very diverse needs and they, they may find that they need in one part of the business the, the LFSO functionality and in another part of the business that is more kind of template driven and they want to utilize MVS and so by bringing those closer together it will make it easier to, to, for those to coexist um, and then we have optimized cross-site scheduling so this is really a reflection of what we're seeing in the market we're seeing the need for more multi-skilling. We're seeing the need for, for more multi-location working and optimizing that kind of brings the technology together and will help organizations to, to optimize the way they approach that challenge. And Bob, if you want to, uh, to talk through Reflexus. Absolutely, yeah. So Reflexus, um, you know, for everybody that you probably know this, but let me hit on it anyway, we'll give a little bit of background, right? Reflexus is a longtime workforce management vendor and execution management vendor. They've started out primarily doing execution and task management, eventually built a robust workforce management system on top of that. And now both systems are widely used throughout the retail and hospitality industry. Uh, more recently, and I mentioned this earlier, Reflexus got acquired by Zebra. Uh, Zebra is the traditional hardware handheld uh, manufacturer and distributor. Um, and I think that that acquisition uh, presents some interesting opportunities for Reflexus going forward. But from a, a functional perspective, uh, really the, a couple of new things that Reflexus has done recently is, <clears throat> excuse me, they've implemented a standalone AI solution, which they call ADA. And it really is intended to be an interactive chat box and assistant that allows um, the uh, users to leverage information across the platform. 
so that it, you know, it ultimately helps uh, employees and managers make better decisions uh, on uh, kind of on the sales floor. Uh, in addition to the, the in addition to ADA, uh, they've also focused on expanding their Q Suite solutions. So when we talk about Q Suite with Reflexus, what those are are are, are effectively modules that add value very quickly. So as we as they expand these modules, it includes things like Q Check to speed up you know checklist creation or Q Comms, which is intelligent communication for uh, which is good for like crisis management like you know, COVID and things like that, or Q Walk, which includes a simplified store auditing capability. So expanding these solutions help uh, Reflexus customers get value out of the solution that much faster. Now, as we start looking ahead a little bit, a lot of what is important to uh, Reflexus is, is integration, right? So we're going to see them integrate with Zebra at prescriptive analytics uh, to help identify areas of improvement and efficiency for customers. We're also going to see more collaboration with Microsoft, right? That seems to be a common theme, and we'll talk a little bit about that, that at the end. Uh, but Reflexus is going to be doing more and more with Microsoft as well. So that's, that's Reflexus. Andrew, do you want to talk about uh, our UKG? Sure. So UKG, uh, previously Kronos, um, they following the, the merger, the 2020 merger with Ultimate Software, now UKG. Um, so a couple of things, a um, couple of kind of exciting areas. And um, so one is the, the, the Dimensions Marketplace. So the Dimensions Marketplace allows you to download apps that effectively add functionality to the, to the solution. Um, examples include sort of Microsoft Outlook um, plugin or app, which allows you to access schedule information and KPIs directly from what, while you're working in your email. And what we're seeing is a development of those, those apps um, as kind of move through time. Um, also partnership with ThinkTime, um, which is a global partnership for, for Kronos. And it allows um, kind of the embedding of the task management solution that is offered by ThinkTime, which means that task prioritization and monitoring as well as store auditing um, is something that can be added to the, the kind of the suite of, of options for, um, for UKG clients. And then upcoming, there are further improvements to Amy. So Amy is the AI assistant within the UKG uh, Dimensions product, already quite a capable AI offering, but further improvements are being targeted in the area of short-term schedule recommendations. So this is things like identifying cross-skilling opportunities and availability, improved availability opportunities with your employees, as well as looking at longer term um, insights. So looking at six, 12 month outlooks and advising on um, capacity planning. So for example, do, do we need to look at bringing in new resources and, and hiring to fill positions? And then lastly is the data hub. Um, so the, the Data Hub is a, an investment in data analytics, um, which is, utilizes the power of Google. Now, the outcome of this means that strategic analysis on, on sort of large volumes of data um, will be provided and, and it will give customers specific output, which will help steer them into initiatives and, and, and provide more data for them to an, analyze. Now, the, the final vendor um, in our market leader category is Workforce Software. Um, so Workforce Software, they have a, a new UI that they've rolled out across their entire suite. So this is desktop, mobile, everything has been kind of overhauled. Um, it, it represents a complete sort of modernization of the look and feel and the user experience. Um, but it's also updated the, the hub dashboard and the hub dashboard is kind of viewable, actionable notifications. And it provides um, users with kind of key information in, in the place that they need it. And that has also been part of the, the UI update. Um, another area is universal scheduling and the introduction of. This is something due for release later this year. Um, and what this is about is, is providing a highly versatile user experience. Um, that can support a wide range of clients. So this is from retail to hospitality to, um, to event management. And, and the idea here is that the, the scheduling um, capabilities are, are vast from kind of more simple template driven scheduling through to more advanced demand based um, scheduling, but providing it within a kind of all encompassing standardized experience. 
And then other areas are um, AI assistant. So um, they're looking at ways in which they can bring in an AI assistant to build upon the decision-making recommendations that already form part of the product. And then integration. So improving integration to allow um, for the solution to coincide and coexist with other platforms um, like, for example, Concrete that provide a task management offering. I think that's, uh, that's everything for our, um, our, our leader category. Great, well, let's, let's jump in then and talk about the, the market challengers. And we do have a couple of challenges to talk, or a few cha challengers to talk about today. So I'm gonna kick things off and talk to us about Legion. So for those that don't know Legion, Legion is uh, relatively new to the market, having come into the WFM space uh, from as a startup a few years ago. And they had some very early wins across a variety of different retail uh, customers. So one of their, their biggest customers is Dollar General uh, with 15,000 stores. Uh, they've also uh, had success with Cinemark, the, the U.S. Uh, cinema chain. Uh, we've seen success at, at Circle K, uh, you know, global convenience store, as well as at Five Below, an apparel retailer. So they've, they've cut across a, a, a wide number of sec, uh, uh, segments within the retail landscape. Uh, now, in terms of what they're doing and kind of where they're going with the product, they're, they're taking a lot of learnings from their, their early customers and bringing that into the product. So, for example, they've been early to adopt artificial intelligence and AI across their platform. And within the forecasting solution that they have now, they're adding uh, the ability to, for their forecasting system to automatically move between different AI or machine learning solutions to pick the, the model that's going to be best for the engine that's going to be best for um, uh, the particular environment for that retailer. So they're going to be able to move very quickly from a rapid response to a short-term ML to a long-term to a short-term ML that's thinking about seasonality and to a, uh, and whatnot. So it's it's pretty powerful how it's going to move across uh, different types of machine learning capabilities based on what the data is telling them. Uh, they're also adding a number of new scheduling functions that are gonna make it much easier to manage large and complex uh, rosters. Uh, we also are gonna see them introduce uh, a compliance service. So Legion will actually advise customers on upcoming legislative, le legislative changes that might affect them. And, and then last but not least, uh, you know, Legion is maturing and evolving as a workforce management vendor and providing various pre-release environments now for customers to be able to test new features and functionality before they actually roll that into uh, production. Uh, so lots of enhancements coming uh, at here and coming from Legion. That, Andrew, do you want to talk about Quinix? Yeah, sure. So um, Quinix are, are not a new workforce management vendor. They were founded in 2005 in Europe, um, but they have been kind of growing and, and the last couple of years considerably so where they actually opened an office in North America two years ago. Now, since then, they have um, they've kind of uh, landed several notable new clients in that space, enterprise clients. Um, and what we're finding is that, as with all of the market challenges we're talking about today, we're coming across them more and more with vendor selections and with client engagements. Um, now, a, a kind of really exciting um, kind of announcement is the uh, acquisition of Widget Brain. Now, Widget Brain is a powerful kind of algorithmic tool. Um, and what Quinix have done is, is they've now um, fully embedded that tool into their platform. Um, so this means that the benefit of doing that, it gives them um, kind of several net new features in their product, as well as kind of upgrading areas that they already had. So we're looking now at long term planning capabilities, but also enhancements to their forecasting and scheduling capabilities that they had before. Um, what, what this also means is that the, um, the widget brain um, capabilities that now form part of the Quinix product mean that Quinix are able to position themselves both as a workforce management vendor offering an end-to-end -end solution, but also as an AI optimized vendor, which means they can provide kind of algorithmic horsepower for, for existing workforce management solutions for, for clients. 
Other areas of interest for, for Quinix are the AI assistant. So again, that's an area that Quinix is also looking at to, to further aid with, with decision-making um, processes. Um, and then there are kind of the, another area is, is uh, more frequent and smaller updates to be provided to their clients to make the, the kind of the multi-tenant up, upgrade path um, more kind of uh, digestible. And then Bob, did you want to uh, take us through when I work? Absolutely. So uh, the last challenger we're going to be talking about today is when I work. And when I work is has been around for some time, uh, primarily serving the small and mid-sized business. But like I said at the in our introduction, um, they're going to start moving into the enterprise space, and they brought in a new CEO and some other uh, experts to help them help them get there. Uh, and so to help them get there, you know, they're, they're recognizing they need to get more visibility and, and make a, get people comfortable with what they're doing. Uh, and so they're going to be offering a, a, an easy way to do a trial with them, right? One of the things that we often advise our customers, if they are knowledgeable workforce management vendor or knowledgeable workforce management users, is rather than uh, go through a traditional RFP and scripted demo process is to actually do a hands-on CRP with a with you know kind of your final your finalists in the process so that you really can put the system through its paces, and and this idea uh, what what uh, where I, when I work is doing is by by offering a bit of a free trial it makes it very easy for you to do that CRP and try the solution out. Uh, they're also implementing a number of new enhancements to their UI to make it again easier to 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 scale the solution and help employees, uh, basically empower employees to influence their schedule a little bit more. And then as we start looking ahead, we're gonna see them introducing uh, new functionality uh, to make it easier to automate uh, schedule creation. Uh, there, it's not necessarily optimization, but how can they get a schedule created faster and easier? Uh, and they're also, and we're hearing this from a lot of vendors too, we're also hearing this from a need from a lot of customers, is they're really focused on how do we expand, how do we make it easier to share labor across stores or across locations? And uh, they're gonna be implementing some functionality around that. So when I work is, is like I said, our newest challenger, and it'll be interesting to see how, the, how, that, uh, uh, how they uh, penetrate the market over the next couple of years. So that's it for our, our challengers. I guess, Robin, do you wanna uh, come back into this conversation then? You bet. So I mean, obviously, I think from all of the information you gave us, this um, who knew that the workforce management vendor landscape was so sexy and hot these days, right? There's so much going on. Um, I mean, it's dynamic, it's ever-changing. And, and look, we understand not only is it just business practices, but it is out, uh, the, the outside things that are happening to us as, as the world starts to change for our, our practices in workforce management. But I feel like there are some there were some common themes that we were hearing through both the, the leaders and the challengers. I, I, I mean, obviously, I have the notes, so I looked at them and feel like, gosh, this, all, this seems like it's ticking and tying together. I mean, Andrew, I, I guess I'll start with you to say there, there are some common themes here, right? There are yes, and and in the preparation to this, I think Bob put it in the in, in he put a good phrase together, which is this this webinar might be a little bit like trying to drink from a fire hose. So we kind of wanted to um, break it down and really identify and, and highlight what we see the key themes as being. Um, so really, we we categorise them into three three kind of buckets of, of themes. Um, so the first is around artificial intelligence and, and machine learning. And what we're seeing is that the vendors broadly are looking at ways that they can use their platform to, to save time for and, and make their um, the interactions with their technology more efficient. Um, they're also looking at ways in which they can actually coach management to, to make better decisions, um, as well as kind of improve modeling during these kind of unpredictable and very, very varied times. And Andrew, something, something I would say around that too is that what we've seen is that the degree with which vendors have, have implemented ML or AI varies quite a bit from vendor to vendor, right? Almost everybody will talk about ML as being a forecasting method right now. Not everybody, but almost everybody does. But then how AI is influencing things like time off or 
creating a schedule or schedule edits or other recommendations really does tend to vary from vendor to vendor right now. Absolutely. Now, the, the, the second category that, that we have is um, as, a, as a kind of a, or the second theme that we've observed, should I say, is around third party integration. And this really comes in in several flavors. Um, so when we say third party integration, we mean that there's a lot of activity in this space. So we've got from integration with kind of popular technology platforms where, where vendors are looking to harness those platforms and, and tie into them. Um, we're also seeing integration into the, the gig economy and resourcing and trying to solve that problem, make it easier for clients to, to spin up more resources where they need it on, on short term notice. And then we're also seeing integration for, for kind of cross-platform support. So how can workforce management solutions coexist with other workforce management solutions? It doesn't necessarily mean that there would just be a single solution used by each client. And so the, 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 the types of changes and evolution that we're seeing is to allow for that, um, for those platforms to coexist. It's like accessibility is really very, very important these days, right? No matter how you get, get the information, the UI or the front end, accessibility to information is more important than ever. Absolutely, which actually leads us um, nicely <laughs> into our, our third theme, which is around mobile. And, and while we haven't focused specifically on mobile, as, as Bob said in, 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 the, in the outset, we are seeing a, a theme. Mobile has been a theme for, for many years now. We've seen development in this area. But I think that the, with, with what has been going on in the world the last 12 months, we're seeing more than ever a, a kind of an increased focus on, on mobile because of remote working is happening all over the world. There is a, a very um, direct need for clear and instant communication between employer and employee. Um, and we're also seeing that the the expansion of functionality in this area to allow employees to be um, empowered to, to do more of what they need to do and to do it in the comfort of their own home or away from being face to face with their manager. That's great. Thank you. So uh, as as we've got about five minutes left and I've got a few more things that I, I want to cover before we wrap it up uh, as we start to summarize, but I do want to give you guys, uh, the audience, an opportunity to ask any questions. So we've had a couple questions come in. Please feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we may not be able to get to every question. We're certainly happy to stay a little bit past the 45 minute mark to answer those questions. Um, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to use the, the Q&A function. One of the questions that did come in was how are the vendors pricing uh, the functionality and, and their modules? Are they, is it kind of an all-in price or is it a, a module, my module price? And, and the answer is, is it depends. Uh, for the most part, the, the it, modules are being priced by the vendors uh, kind of on, on their price book. But what they'll end up doing is, is kind of bringing that together. So as you buy more modules, you get bigger discounts. And so it's hard to actually trace back you know, if it, it, it's hard to trace back uh, the the total price that you're seeing to the individual modules because there are so many things that influence what that final price is. Um, so at the end of the day, it feels like it's a one one price fits all type thing, but the reality is is there's a lot that goes into that calculation in most cases. Again, happy to answer any other questions that kind of come in. Uh, but as we as we kind of move on here, I think one of the things that I hope that you appreciate is is the market is dynamic, right? We, we're seeing such a, a, an evolution in workforce management right now, driven by uh, new innovation, uh, driven by new challengers on the space, given, dr driven by uh, the, the pandemic and the economic realities that we're facing right now. It's also changing because of our workforce. Our workforce is changing and the environments that we're operating in are changing because we're you know, continuing to see a rising labor cost. We're continuing to see, um, you know, more and more uh, workforce related legislation, whether that's predictive scheduling or a uh, higher minimum wage or changes to family leave or whatever it might be. Um, many of our customers are right now evaluating 
what their long-term workforce management strategy is as we start to think about how do we navigate the end of the pandemic and how do we, um, you know, what, what does our workforce look like going forward and what tools and technology do we need to support them going forward? Many customers, many employers are evaluating what their workforce management strategy is right now. And we're in, in fact involved in uh, about a dozen uh, strategy related projects right now where we're trying to work with our customers to help them understand what the opportunity is in terms of the business case, uh, what the roadmap looks like in terms of that adoption, how do these vendors and some of those other solutions that I talked about, mobile and store communication and task and whatnot, how does that all fit together? Uh, and, then, and then help them through kind of the process of finding the right vendors to solve that need. And the reality is, is we've only scratched the surface in what we can do uh, today, right? We, we rushed through nine vendors uh, in, in 45 minutes. And, and the reality is, is, is we could talk for a lot longer. So, you know, please feel free to reach out to us and invite us to come in and take a little bit of a deeper dive and tailor our conversation for really what your needs are. We'd be happy to do that. Uh, needless to say, Andrew and Robin and I and the rest of our team are really passionate about this stuff. And we really enjoy talking about, you know, geeking out on uh, what's going on in the workforce management space. So to the extent that we can help you, please let us know. Um, and, and we'd be happy to come in and help. So now what I'd like to do is, is turn our attention, you know, back to any Q&A. Well, I guess, Robin, do you want to, I guess, how do we want to handle this, right? So let's talk about, we've, we've got some questions that have come in. Uh, we can certainly answer any of the other questions that, that might be happening. And, uh, and then we can, you know, we can start to wrap it up here. So we just have a couple minutes left. So one question that came in was around the COVID pandemic. Robin, do you want to answer that question? Yeah, so it's um, the question was really around it, it did with COVID, does any of the workforce management uh, vendors at this point, have they developed an algorithm to tackle it for forecasting better? And I, I think from, and you guys, Andrew and Bob, feel free to, to jump in if you have the specifics on it. But I remember very early on, if you uh, even go back and take a look, all of the vendors, uh, I remember, especially in our workforce leaders were having conference calls and, and webinars around the algorithms that they were currently using. Because if you think about the ones that were in play that took a lot of very historical information and then created your forecast um, that was coming up, th those were really not helping much when everything was happening in the moment. So we even have a couple of webinars on that if you guys wanted to go back into our retail response page and, and get more details. Because again, we could talk about this for a pretty long time, but I believe yes is the answer. Um, I believe everyone, all of the vendors are tackling the COVID historical information in different ways. So I, I, I would suggest um, really digging into each one of them that's right for you, because some of them are dealing with current information, historical information, utilizing what you've had in the past, since we're not gonna always be in this pandemic. And then what are you looking for in the next year when you're reinventing and coming out of it? So yes, there are, I believe, um, and again, Andrew and Bob, if you have specifics, please feel free to, to jump in. Yeah, so, so a couple of things about mm -hmm. that. One is we do actually have a webinar that talks about dealing with forecasting in the pandemic a little bit better. So if you go to retailresponse.com, in the last couple of months, Alice, Gary, and I did one where we talked about how you can take the forecasting system that you've got today to adapt to what's happening in terms of COVID. Uh, but what we've seen is, is those vendors that have ML in their system have adapted the ML engine to be able to pick up those short-term trends a little bit more effectively. And in many cases have examples of, of doing that, right? I can think of uh, both UKG and Legion have shared examples of how they've done that more effectively recently. Great. One of the uh, other questions, Bob, was are any of the vendors focusing on creating a budgeting module? Um, <laughs> uh, I think everybody's you know, budget, focused on it. But <laughs> budgeting has kind of been a bane of the WFM vendors' existence for a long time, right? That I think we've seen a lot of vendors that have released some budgeting functionality, but it's not been as um, uh, as, as well, as, as well received by the market as I think they hope. So it's not really a focus right now. Now, 
it, various vendors do have various capabilities, uh, but there's not like a new budgeting module that I'm aware of. Andrew, are you aware of something different? I think that there, there are some areas of, of focus for some of the vendors around long-term planning and, and where I mentioned earlier about UKG, for example, looking to bring AI into that, which I think is quite cool. That's something that we've not seen before. Um, looking at ways in which they can identify capacity and help with capacity planning. And we have also seen with the acquisition of, of uh, Widget Brain, for, for example, that that um, kind of does bring in some long-term planning capabilities. But I think you're quite right. There isn't specifically a kind of upcoming budgeting product that, that we're aware of, but there are capabilities in that space which are improving. Yep, yep. Uh, we also had a question in the chat about uh, any insights on what the new uh, admit the Biden administration is doing uh, regarding minimum wage and uh, and the and what impact that's going to have. So, uh, kind of within the U globally, really minimum wage and national living wage continues to be a major issue and a major talking point politically, um, and the. The challenge is whether or not in the US, a, a national $15 a dollar an hour minimum wage will gain traction, gain enough traction with Congress to get, to get through the, the hurdles that it's gonna have to get through. Um, you know, so, so the answer is, is we just really don't know right now. Um, you know, my personal opinion, and you, know, you always get in trouble for giving your opinion, is it's not going to make very much traction. We're going to continue to see that this being legislated locally, which makes compliance much more difficult. Right. Uh, and I say no, because I just think that Congress is going to have a hard time getting that through, um, uh, it, you know, kind of in spite of the, the Democrats um, majority at the moment. Right, exactly. I think we had one last question that came across in Q&A. Um, and it was, um, any, do we have any insight on what customers are saying about the difference of UKG dimensions as compared to Workforce Central? Well, and, and, and that's a, a good example of where a deeper dive conversation would probably be <laughs> worth it. But, you know, the reality is, is that Dimensions is a, a much more modern platform. It is, it in, introduces much more capability and it takes, uh, you know, I think I heard something like 50% of the features in Workforce Central were improved, expanded, or made better in Workforce Dimensions. Um, and, and so, you know, there, I think Dimensions is a big step forward from what Workforce Central was, but again, kind of diving into the specifics is one of those, let's talk afterwards type things. And I think one of the things I think you guys mentioned when we talked about UKG was just the expansion of the marketplace. That alone can provide such an enormous amount of, um, you know, functionality for you as a customer. Um, having that capability. So. When, and Robin, when you say marketplace too, just to make sure we're all on the same page, what you're really talking about is kind of the, the technology, the, the solution marketplace that UKG has yeah. introduced where there are third parties, whether it's, you know, Facebook or I'll plug us, Opus yeah. is, is listed as something that, that uh, works with dimensions. And I agree. It, it shows that extensibility of the solution. Correct. Well, well, do you want to wrap us up here, Robin? Yeah, that's all of our questions. And by the way, thank you. Uh, I see that a lot of you have hung on through this entire process. We really appreciate it. And I, you know, you guys, for those that have been with us before, we, we know, you know that we're here for you guys. You know that um, we absolutely are your partner in crime here. And, and, and you've heard us talk about um, strategy sessions, roadmap helping you with vendor selections, really getting deeper dives into the different vendors that are in this landscape. And if anything, I think today what it shows is that um, there are a lot of choices and, and you have a lot of say, your voice as a customer has a lot of say with the, with the vendors. And here are our, our emails. You guys, um, we're pretty easy to get a hold of. We're active on LinkedIn. Please email us, contact us. Let us know if there's anything that we can do outside of projects and outside of service offerings. We as well stay very connected in the industry. I would like to thank you, Bob, for taking time with us today. You, Andrew, for all that you do for us in the, in the VIP group and ensuring that we have all the data and information um, at our fingertips so we can help our customers. Please have a wonderful day, whatever coast or, or region you're in. Stay safe and thank you all for attending today.